Nice. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, nice, John. Nice and simple and quick. Happy almost Easter, I happy, guess. Are you doing happy almost Easter? I'm doing literally nothing. I'm staying yeah. home. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm uh I yeah, I'm not doing anything for Easter. There's no kids around, so why would I be doing anything for Easter? Yeah. I definitely have friends though that are like, come Monday, I'm going to the store and buying cheap chocolate. I mean, that's what most people use it the holiday for now, that and Valentine's Day. The Valentine's Day similar. Yep. Yep, absolutely. What you been up to for the last week? Anything interesting? Uh, not really. I've been working on Lego again, so that's that's my my downtime hobby at the moment again. With yeah. The oh, again. you you said last week what you moved on to was it the Atari one? I was going to. Oh. I changed my mind. I decided to do the question mark block instead. Question mark block. Very nice. Yeah. Now the question mark block was I think like six hundred pieces less than the Atari, so that's why I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do that one. A little faster. Yeah, a little faster. And then the Bowser one was like 900 pieces more. And I'm just like, uh, yep, it's definitely going to be the, the question mark look. That's cool. Is it a fun build? It's it's a slightly older build than like the one I just did. The the, the Pac-Man kit had like some, some better visualizations in the manual and stuff like that. But so far, it's kind of neat. Uh, it's smaller than I thought it was going to be. I generally thought oh. it was gonna be like this big, this big, and oh, it's gonna okay. be more like this. Yeah, no, I think I've seen it in person before. So yeah, it is. It's gonna be surprisingly dense though, because like I think there's like four different dioramas hidden inside of it, or something like that. Four. Or five. Yeah, they like. They, yeah, they like open up, so it's gonna be full of stuff. Yeah, so that's gonna be wild to see that when it's done. But a lot of Wait, yellow there's pieces. five. I thought I thought there was like three. There's three on the top. There's like a spin Bowser round hidden in the back. Oh, uh, there's okay. another one hidden in the front. I think. I mean, I can check the manual. I got it right here. I don't think I've ever. I think I've seen it open, but it was just on the top, so I didn't know there was a front and back opening. Uh, yeah. So there's uh, Bob on Battlefield, Princess Peach's Castle, Cool Cool Mountain. Inside is Lethal Lava Land because that's what's hidden underneath the three that you open up. Uh, and then in the back, there's like uh, a spinning, throwing Bowser diorama that you can like spin around. So I guess yeah, it's that's... five on a technicality. Okay. And they can, is, do you have to make like a choice which ones you like build and put in there or can they all fit? They somehow can all fit. Wow. What a crazy feat of engineering, you know? Yeah. Like here, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, so that's three of them, right? Yeah, and, and, and this yeah. is a fourth one right here. Oh, okay, okay. And then the the Bowser one's just literally hidden on the back of the box. Got it, okay. Very cool. I'm on step 68, so close. Okay, right on. Of probably like 400 or something. 391. Wow, that's close. Nice. Uh, oh, for yeah. the audio listeners, Paul's not here. I don't know why, but hopefully he'll be back next week. I'm assuming he's away for Easter holiday. That's that's my guess, anyways. Yeah, that's the guess. That's the guess. Um, I also brought some show and tell. Ooh, what you got? Oh, I know what you got. Oh, you got it. But look which look what I look what version I got. That's why I said you got it. I saw the green. I'm like, that's got to be the Xbox one. So for the for the audio listeners, I just showed up the the box of the Wrist Master guitar. I actually haven't taken it this one out yet. Um. But for people who were who were listening last time, or for and for those who weren't, or who didn't uh, hear that part, uh, PDP sent me the guitar, but I forgot to mention which platform I wanted, and they stopped responding after they sent oh. me like the tracking the tracking info. So I was like, you know, John and I were talking like, man, I wonder which one you're gonna get. John thought like, oh, they'll probably give you the Xbox one because it works with PC. It turns out the PlayStation one also works oh, with PC. That's good. Yeah. They, but each of them can work with PC and then the, the corresponding console. Um, turns out the PlayStation one showed up, which I was like, oh, that's what a bummer because all my Rock Band stuff is on Xbox. So I can't play any of my songs and I don't have Rock Band on PlayStation. I, I can just I go buy Rock Band Rivals if I wanted and just download that. But I was like, well, whatever. I can, you know, still shoot some stuff for CNET and co cover this thing a bit because I'll play it with Fortnite Festival. Turns out Fortnite Festival doesn't support the guitars yet. Wait, I thought that was one of the things they were supposed to do in January. 
that's when it was like maybe announced it was going to come, but it, currently it's not. And I emailed PDP back being like, I just want to confirm I'm not screwing something up. Like, I can't use this in Fortnite Festival yet. And they confirmed that, yes, it should be coming as soon as you can't use any of the guitars in Fortnite Festival yet. But as soon as Epic allows that, then, yes, the Rift Master will work. So because I didn't have Rock Band on the PlayStation 5, that I could literally do nothing with that guitar. <laughs> So what happened? So I emailed so I emailed them back being like, is there any way you could send me an Xbox One? I will send you back the PlayStation One. I have all the packaging. And they were like, yeah, sure, do that. Okay, nice. So I sent it to them. They sent me this one. Again, it took a couple of days. Um, I'm going to take it out while we're on the show, because why not? This thing is, is cool, and it's interesting, and there's like some fun like new additions. Let me get it out of this box and out of this packaging. So I already know most of this because, like, I unboxed the PlayStation version. But so it has, like, the bend, the, the attached holding neck for easy ah, transport. Okay. This was this was added on when Rock Band Rivals came out. So that's not entirely new. What is new, though, is on the back of the neck, there's an analog stick. What? Yeah, so, like, here's where the frets are. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense design-wise. Th- because of Fortnite Festival, right? You're going to need to be able to walk mm. around. So that's... I, I don't believe there's ever been an analog stick on one of the guitars, because why would you need it? You, they had the D-pads. Oh, it has both the D-pad and the stick? Yeah, like, it still has the D-pad where you'd expect it, like, down here on huh. the front. But in Fortnite, you're not going to want to walk around the little environment, like, hub they have with just the D-pad, so there's now an analog stick. That's got to be why that's there, right? Has to be, yeah. But, like, yeah. that also kind of makes sense for, like, menu management and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, w- menus you could have just done the D-pad, and that's how. And Rock Band menus had the D-pad, right? So that was totally fine. But, what if that's how they yeah. tell you to activate Overdrive now? <laughs> no, I'm pretty. I, I mean, I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure you just tilt it because everything else seems pretty much the same. The whammy bar is a little bit higher. I'm trying to show the camera. A little bit higher, closer to the strum bars. So if you play lefty, it'll be a little more comfortable. And then um, it's also the first one with. A rechargeable battery, like internal rechargeable battery. Oh, you know, wow. Need to use okay, yeah. So that's pretty nice. It's a pretty good guitar. They're, they're a bit expensive. However, it doesn't stop anyone. These things, the pre-orders have been selling out nonstop. It's 130 I saw Walmart selling the pre-orders for 150 I don't think it came with anything else. So that's kind of weird. Hmm. Um, and the, like, and the fretboard, this little kind of lightish gray. Oh, I'm trying to show the camera. <laughs> There's like a gray part, and then there's the black part. Yeah. This fretboard comes off, and I think if you like pre-ordered fast enough with PDP, you would get like a special purple sparkly one that you could oh, put on there. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. So I don't think there's any way of getting that. That's obviously not the one they sent me. <clears throat> and let me check one thing. Yeah, so there's a little USB dongle, which I'm assuming you would use um for the PC version maybe you have to use it for the the console as well but there's a little holder underneath that fretboard so you can transfer the, this around so that's nice as well nice yeah this thing is cool i'm looking forward to actually playing some rock band with it and then eventually Fortnite festival there's no date on even when that update is coming the, see the last time i heard that was january ish was what they were aiming for so yeah i don't know cuz i i was like looking online I was looking on YouTube to be like, I know I've been hearing some people have this, and I found like one review of it from someone who did not know as much about these guitars as I did. Just putting that out there. Anyway, um, but they Watch the CNET review. (laughs) Um, They they confirmed um, it's not available in Fortnite, and then, yeah, PDP did as well. Seems like not a lot of these are out yet. The The PDP guy stressed to me, like, I'm one of the first people to have it, have gotten this sent to them. Um... Which, which I guess makes sense, because if you go to the pre-order pages, there's not even a date on when the guitar's coming out. Walmart mentioned June, but I don't know if that was a placeholder date or an actual date or whatever. It said available by June, so I, who knows what that could mean. That's pretty far off. It's another two months. This seems yeah. like final product. Um, so, yeah. Anyways... It's cool. I'm I'm looking forward to finally getting to play it because yeah, I've just had it like sitting in my apartment for like five days, unusable. The PlayStation version. What was weird is I could use 
I could like move around the PlayStation dashboard, but as soon as Fortnite loaded, just nothing. Weird. Which I guess it makes sense. It is just like a controller. <clears throat> But you but, think it would still, like, pick up as, like, something. So you could have used, like, the fret to, like, go through menus or something like that. Something, yeah, but just nothing for, for whatever reason. I, I, guess, I, mean, I guess it's on Epic's end to code into the game. You have to, like, understand what this thing is in any way. So, And until now, why would they put any kind of guitar support in their game? Even if it's just... Fair. AB. Even if it's just, like, a joke yeah. thing. Yeah. One board intern decided to try to program it in. Yeah, so... So, yeah, there's my show and tell. And with that, let's go on to the show proper. This is the top-down perspective for May. Nope, for March twenty-eighth. Yeah, I'm wrong Sean M. And John yeah. Wheeler. I was close. Um, John, have you been playing anything? Nope. You you were I think you were streaming another code the the remaster. Yes. So that is my current game clearing game for the uh, the next like couple weeks. I was gonna say we should talk a bit about that because I actually have pl I played a little bit of that when I was in Italy. Ah, uh -huh, okay. When that's when it came out. Yeah, so we started it Monday, and we got to the beginning of Chapter 4. So we were basically near the end of the first game, because it's a two-game collection. Oh, wow. Okay, wait. How long is that, then? Game one's only about four to five hours, maybe five to six. Okay. But uh, the other one is, I think, I heard anywhere from, like, 10 to 15. I know the second one's significantly longer. Yeah. Helen only B probably puts, maybe... Yeah, Helen B puts the collection at around, like, 15 to 17 hours. Okay. Yeah, I'm only maybe like an hour or two in. I think the demo, which did transfer your progress over, is just chapter one. Yes. Yeah, because that's when the ghost shows up for like the first time. That's the yep. end of chapter one, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think it's when you open the door to go into the mansion. That's the end of chapter one. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. No, it's fun. I like it. Um, <clears throat> it's very, It's. I wouldn't say it's complicated. It's very chill. There's one puzzle that kind of annoyed me, uh, and it's because I just didn't realize that we had the feature needed for it. Like, I knew what it wanted, but it wasn't letting me do it until I realized that it required something specific. Which puzzle was that? <clears throat> or have I not even gotten there? Uh, how far in the mansion did you get? Because if you didn't get into the Golden Bird room or Silver Bird room, I forget which one it is, you would not have seen it. I mean, oh, I don't remember. Last time I played it was January. The Gold and Silver Bird sound familiar. Did you make it to Chapter 3? Because it's basically the last puzzle of Chapter 2. That I don't remember. I remember there was like a safe, and we were going into various yeah, rooms. Safe. I don't know. Did you play the piano? I don't think so. Then you wouldn't have done this one. Okay. okay. Is yeah. that the annoying one, the piano puzzle or something? Sort of. It'll it'll make sense. Maybe you'll notice it faster than I did. I don't know. But yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, like that's like everything else has been fairly chill. Like, uh, it mixes up things a fair amount. Like, I mean, it was a DS game from like second year and it's by the same guys that did Hotel Dusk. So, yeah, yeah. I'd always wanted to because, <clears throat> you know, I'm such a Hotel Dusk fan, but just kind of never got around to it. it. It got kind of like middling scores. So it was never like a priority yeah. to try and like find time or, or pick it up or anything and I mean, then i don't think we even got the sequel we did not get the, the sequel the sequel is for yeah. we uh europe got it japan got it we did not so this is the first yeah. time we've even gotten the second uh another code game and then they ch that's where they changed the name was the second yeah. one right because it was actually I believe known as another code in other areas but for here it was called trace memory you're right yeah that's yeah yeah so like the story's not like super blowing me away but like it's it's told well uh, the puzzles, like other than the one which was a little stupid, aren't haven't been too difficult. It's been fairly chill. It's like a nice, relaxing visual novel game, basically. And I even turned on the like guide me mode, yeah. where it's like next you want to go here, and it's like okay, cool. So now the only you can even turn on like a tell me how the puzzles work, and I I don't have that one on, but I do have the like which room should I be going to now thing, uh, which kind of helps with the like point and click nature of it. Yeah. It was funny, um, cause I, so when I, when I was playing it, I was, I was in Italy, I was, I, I had tweeted out a picture, I was on the train going to Pisa, and I propped up the Switch on the table, and just had, and I, I took a picture of, like, the Switch and the, the window on the train behind it, so you could see some countryside, and I tweeted something like, you know, playing another code with the, with the, Ita in the Italian countryside, something like that. Anyway, fast forward to, like, last week two weeks ago whatever gdc was 
and I'm at the Nintendo event and I'm waiting in line to play, you know, whatever game. And there's, you know, there's tons of PR people around and I just start chatting with one who was next to me because we were both in the area. And, and um, she goes, oh, weren't you playing another code in Italy like a couple yeah. of months ago? And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, and I remember like, OK, may- maybe she saw that tweet, which is already like surprising. So I was like, yes, I was. Um, and I was like, that was just after I got sick and the rest of my trip was ruined. Ooh. And so we talked a little about that. I went back to find that tweet and she had liked it. So I'm assuming as a Nintendo PR person, she was just like searching the name to see like, yeah. is anyone talking about this game that I'm covering or um, promoting right now? Um, but that was just so bizarre that like this weird deep cut off one off tweet someone referenced it you never know what's going to happen sometimes in this field it's wild yeah that was that was weird, <clears> so <throat> anyway um all right nothing else you've been playing to talk about not really no i haven't even been playing fortnite yeah. that much lately so all right just vibing uh this week i've been playing rise of the ronin Ooh, tell me about this because i have this, not this been about... hearing the, the hottest things about this one I'm I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Um, this is Team Ninja. This came out last week on the Friday, where like everything came out. Um, it's very I don't know Assassin's Creed, but the, the combat is a lot of parrying, which is it initially is a turnoff for me. But I'm finding this combat easy enough that I'm getting through it without without struggling too much. And they give you a lot of health. Um. Uh, health items to, re- to get your health back and i think that's pretty key to it <clears throat> um so i'm liking that aspect i think it looks really nice it you c- i can't help but compare it to ghost of tsushima because that is another samurai playstation 5 exclusive game um i think i like ghost of tsushima a lot more but uh you know they're 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 different games this game is very heavy on the like combat because it's a team ninja game obviously um, and I also think Ghost of Tsushima just like cinematically looks a lot better and whatnot. Uh, so there, it's hard not to compare them, but I'm but that you know you end up doing it anyways. Um, but I think it's good. You get a horse pretty early on. You get tons of different weapons. It's a loot game, which I wasn't expecting. So you're constantly picking up, you know, sandals and wrist guards and hats and stuff to increase your points a little bit. I like loot games, so that's for me. I'm sh- I'm sure that's gonna kind of turn off some people that sounds like neo at this point i didn't play neo but maybe it's like maybe. stranger of paradise had a similar system so yeah i was i was watching the uh, digital foundry tech review and they compared it a lot to um stranger of paradise as well as oh what was that other parry focus souls like that came out recently oh sekiro no no, it came out recently. It was on Game Pass. Uh, what, not the other one that Team Ninja did, Wanlo or whatever it is. Wu Wulong, yeah, yeah, that one. That's the Wulong one they Fallen were Dynasty that, or that. It's called. Yeah, um, because that one's also very Perry focused, so I could see the comparison there. That was also Team Ninja, that, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that one I think is way more Souls focused because you're kind of going down these like corridors. Um, R- Rise of the Ronin mm-hmm. is a open world. Um, that you're going into like villages and then, you know, clear out the village that which is very Ghost of Tsushima. So it's kind of a mix between uh, those two games. I'm also watching Shogun right now. So I'm just like really into this era of Japan. Nice. Um, but you get a ton of different weapons and you can kind of and they switch how your character plays. And then you by using the weapon, you like level up that sword style. So even though I chose like two sword style at the beginning with, I think, just katanas as my backup. I immediately got just like a saber, which is different than katana, I guess. Um, that was like better than everything else. So it was like, oh, I guess I'm just gonna use this now. And then I got like a spear that was better than everything. So I'm just constantly changing. You get a gun pretty early on too, which is kind of cool because sometimes you're just fighting another samurai and you can just pull out just a rifle and get a headshot. <laughs> and sometimes that'll just kill him. Like it, it's a, it, it's there's a lot of different ways to play the game, which I'm liking because. I really enjoy playing the like stealthy approach of how many guys can I like string up from the rooftops and whatnot, but the combat is also pretty fun and enjoyable. And like I said, it is parry focused, but it's it's pretty lenient. Um, 
And I say that like you do need to parry, but it's not like you need to like only parry. Um, and I will say I tried playing it on the portal and the latency, I just could not get any parries off. <laughs> so that was kind of, which is funny because like I, I play like a ton of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the portal and it's totally fine. But, it, you know, that game's also kind of easy. Um, I cannot play this game on the portal just because of the latency, which is the first time I've not been able to play a game on the portal. Um, I'm liking it. I'm going to play probably a good chunk more of it. Um, so that's cool. You also, there's a, a whole mechanic about like having an ally. And so there'll be kind of two of you taking on the, the uh, opponents or the mission. It's usually kind of mission structure. Do you know, here's an ally for this one. And you can swap between them pretty quick, which is really useful because some enemies will be like, hey, this they have this weapon and that's strong against yours. But maybe your ally has one that's strong against theirs. So that's kind of cool. And you're like double teaming. It also does have co-op, which is awesome. I'm not subscribed to PlayStation Plus though, so I just can't play co-op. Yeah, and I'm I'm not gonna subscribe to PlayStation Plus for like one game, but um, th that's like a pretty niche problem. I I feel like most people who are going to pick this up probably are subscribed to PlayStation Plus because they they play online with their PlayStation. So that's a cool feature that uh, is also in this game. Yeah. Um, another game this week I've been playing is Llama Soft: The Jeff Minter Story. Uh, this is another <clears throat> digital clips game. This is the second in their gold series. So their first game was Atari 50. Um, so this is the second one, which if, if you know Atari 50, you know there's, it's going to be kind of a documentary-esque with oh, a whole do bunch. You, you don't mean the Karatega game, do you? Because I thought that was part of it. So that wasn't, even though that did come out in between them. That is also by Digital Clips, but for whatever reason, that game is not part of their Gold series. I don't know what the distinction is, but you can even look at the box arts, and they have like this little icon. And on the Jeff Minter one, there's the little icon with a two. This is the this is technically the second one in the. I don't know what the the reason of is. Um, I do want to play the Karateka one. Or Karateka, or however, I, I guess if I'll finally learn how to pronounce it. I think it's Karateka, I think is how you're supposed to say it. Something like that. Well, we could, if we, I'm sure they say it in their little vignettes that they put in the game, so there's an easy way to find out for sure. Um, but I haven't played that one yet. Um, so I'm playing the Jeff Minter story, um, which for those who don't know, pretty famous uh, UK based uh, game designer from like the Atari days, basically. The. Um, a lot of Amiga stuff in there, um, PC Engine, all that kind of stuff. Like, very, super early game developer. I know him mostly as the guy that made Tempest, because um, that's probably one of my preferred Jeff Minter games. But most of these games I have never even heard about. Um, my one knock against it, is, which I guess is might be kind of a twofold knock. So, Atari 50, Digital Clips went out and they shot all this content for it, and that was super awesome. It's. It seems like Llamasoft. It, there was another documentary about Jeff Minter. I'm gonna find the name of it. I think it's called Neon. Heart of Neon, something like that. Um, it seems like they pulled a lot of clips from there and didn't actually do the interviews themselves, which is kind of a bummer. Um, because I guess it's kind of it's like old footage or whatnot. Mm. Um, and John, did you play Atari Fifty at all? I did. Yeah. Yeah, so you know how they have kind of like a timeline and then it kind of goes down and here's like here's like a sketch someone made about this game and here's like some business cards and stuff like that. And there's a lot of like supplemental material kind of on these timelines. Yeah. They have those and they have all the quotes and stuff and the little anecdotes of like here's something that happened, you know, in this year with this development of the game. But if you like watch the video that is at like the beginning of the timeline or the video that's at the end, I'll also say there's like less videos than Atari 50, which is a bit of a bummer. And I guess that's probably because they're pulling from someone else's um, collection of videos as opposed to collecting, uh, filming their own. If you if you watch those videos, you like don't need to read any of the little quotes or anecdotes because it's all just in the video. So they're like doubling up on the information to the point where I was like, you know, I watched a video. It's like, okay, cool, nice intro. I went through the whole timeline, learned a bunch, and then I watched another video that told me the timeline again. Like, I just like didn't need to go through any of it. It's nice that it's laid out there, so you can really see like, okay, this game was made specifically when this happened, yada yada yada. But in terms of just like what I'm learning, 
they just double up, which is kind of a bummer. I would have liked new information and I would have just liked more videos because that's like the, my preferred way of, I guess, watching a documentary. It's a, it's a weird thing to kind of compare, but if you're into game history in any way, these gold series, the, the work uh, Digital Clips is doing, I think these are such cool little packages that they're putting out there and they put so many different versions of his games in there. And they did the same thing with the Atari collection is you'll get multiple versions because it was like, hey, when it moved over to this system, they were able to, you know, put extra colors in it and stuff like that. So they'll give you both those versions. And from an academic standpoint, I think that's just really awesome. You don't really get any of that uh, from an archivist standpoint, too. It's cool to see how these things evolved, how they changed it. And Jeff Minner's pretty interesting specifically because a lot of his early days is just copying big games that Atari was doing. And he's like, I'm going to see if I can make that. Uh, and then once he gets famous enough, he's like, okay, so we had to change the name because I did just kind of steal that whole thing. <laughs> and I can no longer just call it that. So we're going to call it something else. And I'm going to make a little bit of a twist. So nobody sues us. So it's kind of interesting that you get to see like both versions and, and him talking about that and stuff. He's also just a weird dude. Like, I guess he just lives on like a farm now with llamas and sheep like he loves animals which makes huh. sense why there's so many animals in his games but he's just i guess he's made enough money where he's just like i don't know i'm hanging out in the middle of the uk just living life hell yeah more power to him for that absolutely i think they mentioned during the pandemic he was i didn't never saw this but he was just live streaming on twitter like feeding his animals <laughs> which i had no idea about until i watched this so he seems like a like a cool game developer for sure um, that's Llamasoft, the Jeff Minter story. All right, last game I want to talk about, and this one I'm particularly excited about. This is Once Upon a Jester, um, which is a, it's a student game. It's it's on Switch and Steam. I picked it up because it was on sale last week when they won Best Student Game at um, the IGF Awards during GDC. And like I, I don't, this has been on my radar for a while. It was on my wish list for a while, and then they won, and I was like, oh, I should do it. To finally grab this game and it was six dollars it was on sale for pretty cheap so it was like now's the perfect time this game is tremendous oh my god it's so good um first off if you are fans of not exactly walking simulators but you know uh night in the woods for example games like night in the woods that are like full of characters and you're just kind of ex ex moseying around and existing in a space with all these fun characters this is going to do a lot for you the voice acting is awesome there's so many just like goofy little songs in here. I get a ton of Adventure Time vibes where you'll just come across like a weird guy and he'll just be in like a weird little voice, which you can tell it's just someone doing like a high pitched voice. They didn't like find someone who has that voice just singing a little song about like bugs. Like that's just like it's it was just a totally an Adventure Time thing like all over the place that there's tons of that stuff in there. Um and so you play a dude named Jester with his buddy Sock, who seems to be some kind of humanoid person whose head is a sock puppet puppet. But OK, whatever. That's cool. Um, and then, yeah, there's just weird little creatures you're hanging out with. You, the concept is you're putting on these plays every night to try and get enough. Um, they, the, the bouquets, but it's basically like you get enough um, notoriety that you can move on to the next town and eventually you're going to perform for the princess but you're actually trying to steal a diamond from the princess <laughs> um but the plays are super goofy because um you can change up the direction they go they're pretty open-ended if you want it to be like a scary play or a comedy or a rom romance it'll change the play and then there's a lot of like mini games is kind of what you're doing but for the most part you're going around you're talking to people and it's just a delight living in this space so you know, if, if you're a visual novel fan or a walking simulator fan, if you if, if Night in the Woods is a game you're interested in, you will absolutely love Once Upon a Jester. So I can't recommend it enough right now. It's currently my right before bedtime game. I'm playing it on the Steam Deck um, and I'm, I'm loving it. OK, we made it through the games. Let's talk about some news. All right. <clears throat> Apparently Spyro 4 is in development. No one is shocked. No, I mean, but it's nice to hear, right? I guess. Is it confirmed to be Toys for Bob, or is it just someone else? So it hasn't been confirmed it's anyone, and in fact, this report comes from a YouTuber. Oh, <laughs> so I don't on. know how accurate it is. Um, uh, I guess the YouTuber who goes... It's a Canadian YouTuber. 
a YouTuber, Canadian Guy A. I guess I actually don't know if they're Canadian, but their name is Canadian Guy A. I so I'm 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 hoping. Um, they pretty much said that it, this is happening. A lot of people at PAX East, I guess, were talking about this, and then to kind of add on to this, uh, last week or I guess early this week, uh, the Windows Central reported that Top Toys for Bob had struck a deal with Microsoft for their first game. Hmm. So that could be the case, but that would make the most sense. I mean, rumor was they were working on Spiral Four for ages. Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, that would be awesome. Uh, they should absolutely do a Spiral Four. Um, I, d d there is a fourth Spiral, right? I remember there being just a ton of Spiral games. There's a ton of Spiral games, but there's never one okay. literally called like Spiral Four. Called for, yeah. Okay. So I think the thing is like the report is saying that Spiral Four is real. Um. There's, it's not actually like confirmed, but that's what I guess the rumor that they're saying is a for sure thing. So I guess we'll find out sooner or later. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm almost kind of surprised that Toys for Bob didn't want to do their own thing, but I guess that maybe this is a safer bet. I mean, this guarantees they get capital because they know their viewers want Spyro or Crash. Like they, they yeah, know. and I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure Microsoft is looking at them being like, we know you can do a good job. So even though you're independent, if you want to do it, like go for it. Um, also from today, early today, Embracer has sold off Gearbox. I heard Take-Two has bought them now. Take-Two bought them for $460 million. Uh, so there's a few... <clears throat> Gearbox has a bunch of stuff. Gearbox also publishes a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So they didn't get everything Gearbox. So Take-Two is going to get Borderlands and Tiny Tina. Okay. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands franchises. Also, Homeworld, Risk of Rain, which I totally forgot was now under Gearbox. I didn't realize that was Gearbox either. They published it, yeah. Uh, Brothers in Arms and Duke Nukem, which I also forgot that Duke Nukem was over at Gearbox. I never forgot. Uh, <laughs> I kept the faith. Not surprised. You think they're going to come out with another Duke Nukem game? Yeah, eventually. Ever? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Embracer is hanging on to Cryptic Studios, Lost Boys Interactive, Captured Dimensions, Gearbox Publishing San Francisco, which is going to be renamed, um, which is which includes the publishing rights to the Remnant franchise, the upcoming Hyperlight Breaker, and then it says other notable unannounced releases. I love notable unannounced releases. Yeah, uh, who knows what that could be, but... I guess, like, good for them. Part of this um, also revealed that Borderlands 4 is in development. Again, not shocking, especially with the yeah. movie now coming out officially. To no one's surprise. I understand Borderlands 3 sold incredibly well, despite the writing being incredibly poor. <laughs> um, but I guess, you know, good for Gearbox. There had been rumors that this was going to happen. I remember we talked, like, a couple weeks back... Um, when they sold off like Saber and all these other people. So it, it's kind of crazy how much Embracer like scooped up and now how much is leaving them. Like it was this weird flash in the pan and we are definitely entering like a different era now. I mean, they did kind of go very, very like purchase happy. They went very acquisition happy. Absolutely. And then they, um, they had that crazy huge deal from, I believe it was Saudi Amer Arabia fall through and that just kind of destroyed a lot of stuff and led to a bunch of the layoffs we're seeing and yada 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 now they're selling off all these properties uh also so this this broke last night we got leaked photos of the next xbox update this is a discless xbox series x oh, i did not see this um if you'll remember during the Activision uh, Microsoft lawsuit, the article, the uh, not article, um, the documents came out about the Brooklyn, the codename Brooklyn device, which was the cylindrical one that we've talked about a few times. Mm. It seems like this is probably what that ended up being. Uh, Phil Spencer did go on record and say, like, yes, that document is real, but it is quite old. So we it was kind of unclear how much of it was still accurate as of when those documents came out. Those documents came out, by the way, in September of last year. Uh, these new leaked photos, it looks exactly like an Xbox Series X, but white without a disk drive. Um, 
the the little bits of information we have apparently a, a, n a newer heat sink so it'll stay cool i didn't think the series x ever really got that hot anyways but okay um sort of did at launch there were some people that reported it but like not i some of all people were just kind of messing around with it too so i'm not even sure which of those were real yeah i'm going completely anecdotally like the times i've touched it I've never been like, whoa, look out. This is things I got to move this and I keep it in somewhat of an enclosed space. So. Um, 50 to $100 cheaper, which would put it kind of in the middle of the current X and the current S. So, you know, maybe 450, 400. Um, and then targeting a June, July release. I think this thing is super Niche, super odd super niche too niche well, i don't it's weird because it's like if there are no improvements to the power then this is clearly not the ps5 pro competitor yeah so it's something closer to like a competitor to the ps5 slim but it doesn't seem like this is going to be smaller either and you're just losing the disk drive like yeah i don't know it's it's it is odd. I'm, I'm wondering kind of who this is for because it's got... I mean, I don't put a lot of... I don't put very many discs in my Xbox or my PlayStation these days. Pretty mm -hmm. much ever for the most part. So it's, I wouldn't be missing out on too much. Um, but like at this point, for 50 to 100 bucks more, why not just get the Siri, the black one and then mm -hmm. I'm future-proofing myself a little bit? No idea. Oh, and now Siri's chiming in. Thanks, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to buy you one. Yeah, maybe. Um, that makes me want to think, like, maybe there is going to be some internal upgrades, like two terabytes of internal space. That would be pretty nice. Technically, the PS5 Slim did bump up the storage, like, a little bit. But, like, I would, I could see Xbox going further with that. Then I could maybe see, like, hey, this thing is all digital. You're going to need more storage space. That makes sense. Go for it. But if it really is just, like made it white and got rid of the disk drive that's kind of a hard sell i don't know i don't know if i recommend that over just getting the black one so i'm hoping there's some some internals in there but who knows i mean we'll see right because if it's june july they've gotten like another month or two to make some final tweaks yeah like i wonder do they just kind of announce it during the like the e3 window they're gonna have a you know a showcase and then it's out n next month it's out in a couple weeks which again, if if that timeline also makes me think it's not a huge step up as well. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see, I guess. I have contacted my Xbox rep. I've asked for one. So we'll see <laughs> what happens. Um okay, along more similar Xbox uh reporting. There was a kind of a quote from Phil Spencer. This was during the week of GDC where he basically hinted at wanting to open up the Xbox model um, by getting PC games, PC game stores, specifically like Epic Games, appearing on the Xbox. Which this would be pretty crazy. So the only kind of analog we have around this is Apple opening up their, you know, walled garden, their, their iPhone in the EU being told you have to let other stores go in. And we know the Epic Game Store is coming this year. Um, so, you know, getting a PC storefront on the Xbox, that would be pretty cool. That would be weird to get used to, but also yeah, kind of neat. Like, I, we, I don't, we've never had a console that had multiple storefronts. I guess it is similar to the Steam Deck. You can put whatever storefront you want on that and then just download the game to it. So I could see it working. Like if, you know, there's the PC, um, like Microsoft has PC games. So they, you know, they have console. Uh, what am I trying to say? They have controller support for a lot of PC games. A lot of Steam games have controller support. If they could get it run, getting Steam, for example, on the Xbox would be such an amazing thing. Just the, the sales alone. Uh, like the discount, I mean, in terms of sales would, would just be insane. It would open up. You'd get so many more games on your Xbox. That's worth it to Microsoft. Yeah. Um, they specifically called out uh, the Epic Game Store, which I could see Epic trying to push this more than Steam because Steam's doing fine. Steam doesn't need anybody's help. 
it's a complete juggernaut. But Epic is the one making all these deals, you know, giving away free games, doing all this, uh, you know, quote unquote, more exciting stuff to try and get users in there. So I guess we'll see. Um, I'm sure Epic would love it because then, you know, when people are buying their V bucks on Xbox, they could just get the 100% of the cut. They don't have to go through Microsoft's storefront and get the 30% cut or whatever it is. If that happens, that would be pretty wild. So that's something to watch out for. And then I got one more news story here. Uh, a new milestone for unionizing game workers in North America. The first contract. This comes out of Sega of America. Um, they got a contract, uh, the union, which has about 150 people, uh, including designers, testers, and others. Uh, ratified a contract that gives them guaranteed raises, just cause, and other benefits. It's the first union contract at a major U.S. gaming company. A milestone that may accelerate organization across the industry. That's Jason Schreier's words. Good for them, man. Some of the other wins they got, i um, reading this tweet from Stephen Totillo. So raises, layoff severance, and hybrid work commitment for six months minimum. There's, there's more that they want. You can read the whole thing, but just a... Yeah, like they said, this is kind of the biggest contract. So a lot of them have unionized. There's a lot of steps from unionizing to actually getting the contract in terms of like getting recognized. A lot of the unions have gotten that part. Then begins the contract negotiations of what the company is actually going to give the people in the union and stuff like that. So the fact that they finally got to this point is, is a pretty big deal for them. And good for them. And like I said, if you want to read more of what they, the, the Sega union did, there's a few more bullet points you can read through. There's a bunch of it there. Yeah, unions. Heck yeah. Hopefully this actually leads to good shit. Well, I mean, it's going to, I'm sure it's going to lead those guys. Like some of those things are awesome. Absolutely. Like raises alone. Who doesn't want to raise? All right, let's do some questions. If you want to send in a question to the show, it's top down perspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter, the discord channel or John's PO box. And you could sound like Rasterman that writes, is there a game you don't remember playing at all, yet there's evidence that you did and you end up questioning it from time to time? Uh, I am a streamer who streamed over a thousand video games. Yes. <laughs> I, I figured you for sure. Does anything come to mind where you, that you get rem reminded about or anything recently you got reminded about? Did I get reminded about? I don't know, really. Uh, let me see here. They used to have or a list. maybe this. Have you, when was the last time you like looked back at a random old video and you're just like, I don't remember doing this at all. I could say that for a lot of the things I've said in the videos, but for the actual like stream itself for games, yeah, I'm not even sure. Someone in the chat is mentioning Orb 3D. Does that mean anything to you? Yeah, that's an NES game we did a playthrough of. That was not a not a fun experience per se. Okay, but you remember it? Yeah, I do remember it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, this is hard. You're asking me, what have I forgotten? <laughs> um, well, when you word it like that, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to think if there was one that I've, that I've been reminded about. And now I remember doing it. <sighs> yeah, this, this spreadsheet I'm looking at, if that, if I assume this counts duplicates, four thousand five hundred and seventy different video games I've played on stream. Oh, you keep track of like which games you've uh, streamed. One of my mods and friends actually tracks everything. Oh, okay, wow. So I have a spreadsheet of everything I've streamed. So I've played, yeah, what did I say, 4,570 games. I don't know if they're different games or if that's including playing the same game over and over. But, like, that's how many times, that's how many games, period, have been played on the stream since 2013. Jeez. Sorry, 2012. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> I think the closest thing I have is when I go through some of my game collections, whether it's from just, like, moving or bringing you know halls of it down for my parents to put into my place um because they don't want it there uh i will come across games where it's like i don't even remember like purchasing this or like how did i get this <laughs> um and I, I think there was like a tetris game that i have over there and i think i even like tweeted out like what where did this come from i don't remember doing anything with this game like wh why do i have it so i think that's the closest i have to it yeah. 
Hayes Hero EX says, if you have to spend a day without using a vowel for everything, speaking, typing, and writing, which one would you choose? You. You? Okay, I'm trying to think like which words would get like thoroughly messed up. Like you, you're basically you can't do A or E. Like those are that's those are usually the most common. I is also kind of I, pushing it. I was gonna say maybe E. You would try to do it without the letter E. That well, is like okay. So I'm just trying to think of some words like friend. It would be friend. Oh, you would still get what I said, right? Oh, if you're just doing that. I thought, Are you just, just, saying, I thought like, you just couldn't out, say the word, period. Say like, the word. Oh, yeah, like you okay. can't use the take... words that have this vowel in them. That's why I'm like, okay, you. That, if you yeah, want to cheat, I we could say but, why, but. Yeah, well, why is, I guess, against the spirit. I guess you, in that case, would be pretty good. People are saying you can't say the. The would be pretty hard if I couldn't say the. If I'm allowed to say the words without the, the vowel... I was thinking I, but then it gets rid of a, a lot. Then it makes a lot of the words that are like in it. If you is, got rid of which... E, you couldn't even say your own name. You'd be yeah. San. You'd be San Book R. Well, exactly. Like the last name is. It's pretty much there. You've you yeah. got like ninety percent of it, right? So, like, it's basically just Book R, and you like there you go. That's so. I think it's doable, but yeah. If you take if you if I can't say the words. I guess it's you. Okay, what if you can't do you? Because you seems almost too obvious. You, uh... I or O, then at that point, A or E just seems too common. If I get rid of I, I like I can say my name, but if I get rid of O, I can't say Jonathan, so. Yeah, it's hard because there's, I, I think I is so important for those like small little words. Yeah. So maybe I would get rid of O. Like, I can't say my last name. But I got my first name, at least. You'd be Sean Bicar. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I'm sounding it out, it'd be Sean Booker. <laughs> so it works again. <laughs> Bacar. Booker. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because, yeah. <laughs> so maybe I'm okay with the O. I don't know. All right. Uh, Suku Suku writes, what is the video game equivalent of someone asking, but can he beat Goku? <laughs> i mean goku's in a lot of games so i feel like it yeah. does translate pretty close can but goku I, in fact I, beat goku did you see that most recent it's, there's like a there's a dragon ball z game coming out i think it's like an arena sparking fighter. zero sparking zero they like release like the first 16 characters and it's it's eight different versions of goku and vegeta but they listed all of them and they're like here's the first 16 characters <laughs> So this like this press release just sounded like absolute nonsense. <laughs> well, this is supposed to be uh, like the latest Budokai Tenkaichi game. Tenkaichi one. Yeah. yeah. Um I think I got this from our Discord, so this is someone else's idea, but like put him in Smash is I think the equivalent. Yeah. This is just where you're just asking for like a what is a saying that like so many people say about a bunch of different characters? I guess, but like, 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 who is like the strongest video game character? That's kind of how I take it. So like, like for anime fighters, like, oh yeah, he's that guy's strong, but can he beat Goku? So like, what's the equivalent for video games? Like, are we just trying to pick like what's a very strong character in video I guess. games? But can he beat Senator Armstrong? <clears throat> Senator Armstrong. Uh, I, I, this is just maybe because Final Fantasy is on my head. Is like, do you end up fighting God? I'm surprised you didn't say like Asura too from Osra's Wrath. But can well, he beat Osra? Yeah, that's true. Well, Osra ends up fighting God. I feel like in a lot of games, <laughs> you end up at the end of it, you fight God. But do they the fight world. God? Yeah, there you go. That's do just they... like that's like the JRPG trope. Like, yeah, but do they fight Is... God? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Phantom Age just writes in and says, "Ahoy, TDP crew! What are some singular video game tracks that you prefer the original over the remastered or reimagined version?" Ooh, I know I have an answer for this, but I can't think of it right now. Oh, okay. I hope you think of it because I don't think I have an answer for this. <laughs> uh, I just don't think I'm like like listening to game stuff enough to like have both of them in my head, really. I can only think of like small examples. Like I prefer like the NES Mario one, two, three versions over the Super Mario All Star SNES one, two, and three because the soundtracks they they don't sound as charming. Okay. Like little things like that. 
the one the one that came to my mind when I first heard thought of this was all of the Final Fantasy music and then the kind of orchestral versions that we're getting in the in the remasters. And I like the orchestral versions we're getting. Rebirth specifically like has the Chocobo theme like five different ways because it changes up based on what area you're in. Hmm. Um, so I like that. But nothing, nothing else for you then? No, that was the big one that came to mind for me just then. Okay. That's going to do it for questions this week then. If you want to send in questions for next week, it's topdownrespective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter, the Discord channel, or John's P.O. Box. And what is your game of the week? I guess it's another code. Uh, and I'm going to give mine to Once Upon a Jester. All right. We'll be back next week. Have a good Easter if that's something you guys do. Um, otherwise, thanks for listening, and we'll see you later. All right. Bye, everybody.